Houston Art Tribe. I am Kay Sarver and I am sitting here with Carrie Reeder in her studio, at, which is in, yes, <laughs> <say> hello. Hi. <laughs> this is in her, uh, this is actually in Winter Street uh, Studios. Yes, uh, Winter Street Studios. Really lovely. Do, how long have you been here? I have been at Winter Street, uh, I'm thinking five years. Okay. I started downstairs. I was uh, sharing a studio, and that was about six months, and I realized I needed my own studio. So I came upstairs, had my own studio with no windows. It was kind of like being in a closet. Yeah. And then uh, I kept eyeing this studio and <laughs> waiting beautiful. for the person here to move out, and finally they moved out five months. Ago. It's great. This window is yeah. fabulous. And so I... I like that, you know, people will come and visit, but I'm really mainly here to come in and work, and it's convenient yeah. to my house, and that's what uh, I like about it mostly, is it's five minutes, so I live in the Heights, so it's five yeah. minutes away, and uh, I have friends who work here down the hallway, I have a lot of artist friends here, yeah. and I know that I come in, and they're going to be here, and, you know, we'll work, and I'll come down and you know, and complain about stuff, and they'll complain <laughs> about stuff, and we'll talk about good things and bad things, and I just know that somebody's down the hall working, and I'm here working, and, you know. That's really great. It's, it's, good. it's so refreshing <laughs> to know it's a, a real working studio. Not that anything is wrong with using a space to show as well, you know. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of these, uh, especially the newer ones, I think that's a lot of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, a lot of people use those mainly to show their work. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, maybe they're they're really small. They're, yeah. I think a lot of them are smaller than this, and they're yeah. they're so nice. You don't want to mess up the floor. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but I really use this as a working space, and I kind of get annoyed when I have to clean it up and show my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's actually that's a good sign. That means yeah. you know you need to, you like working, and you I think you have such a strong work ethic. I, I believe you get in here almost every day, don't you? I do, I do. Now that I gave up my, um, I gave up all day jobs about, I guess a year ago. I mm -hmm. had, I've been working slowly toward yeah. not having a day job for, um, I guess, a couple of years. So mm -hmm. I, I worked down to part time and then, um, and now I, I, just work on my art and I teach at Art League. So oh, those, yeah. that's what I do. And then I also help artists um, sometimes with uh, writing about their artwork. So yeah, helping yeah. them with proposals for art shows and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. So I know so it's, it's great. I'm living the dream. You know, oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. I, I love this. And, you know, uh, speaking of, I mean, I've been following your work for a, oh, a few years for sure. I think I think I was really struck the first time I saw, it might have been your industrial series uh -huh. that I first saw, and it got into some Jared show or something, and I remember thinking how much I was amazed with the way you saw something that most of us think of as kind of, you know, it's like a tedious, functional thing, mm -hmm. and you you pulled up this whimsical almost feel uh, you know I thought oh. they, were, they were marvelous so uh, oh, talk like, about what inspired that uh, um, I think a lot of my art is inspired by things that I pass by and kind of the mundane yeah um, and so that was just inspired by my drive to I think going to work every day I would pass by this uh, electric substation and I thought oh there's yeah. just so much going on there and um, and I thought well maybe I'll draw it and I showed it to an instructor and he just scratched his head and he said oh gosh are you sure you want to do this and I thought oh well, maybe I'll paint it and then I really that's when I started getting into simplifying yeah, some yeah, of my work yeah. so I started simplifying it and I, I think I've always uh, I 
When I started out in art, this was 30 so years ago, I started out in graphic design. So mm -hmm. I, um, I did, you know, I did very kind of minimal stuff because yeah. it's graphic design. And then, then on the side, I did this series of whimsical cows, oh, the bovine okay. design. So yeah. it's, you know, I kind of had this background doing co uh, comic stuff. Uh -huh. So I think uh -huh. that sensibility came into those electric um, substations, yeah. even though I didn't mean it to, I wanted to be a serious artist. I no, I get it. It really makes it, and I loved it. I, I but no, it did translate into something not funny, but just I looked at it completely different. These mm -hmm. industrial sort of machinery, you know. Yeah. So I love that you did that, and uh, and it, it's funny that um, somebody uh, I thought, you know, why am I doing these? I mean, they're just really interesting, and there's so much going on, but. Mm -hmm. Somebody, I, I was talking to somebody, I think it was Sue Donaldson, uh, and maybe Sue Donaldson, uh, a Sue, I think, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it is, she, she, I was saying, yeah, well, my dad was a ham radio operator, and I have this kind of, had this complicated relationship with him, and she said, maybe that's why you're doing those electric substations because that's there's all those wires and tubes and stuff. Wow, like that. that's revealing. You're right, you're probably right. <laughs> See, when you think about it, we're often just working stuff out that we're not even consciously aware of sometimes. Yeah, I'm definitely, I think I, everything I do is some kind of subconscious thing that I'm working out. <laughs> that's more normal than I realize with, yeah. with uh, creative people. Mm -hmm. um, do you, of course, then the next series, uh, well, I don't know if that was the next series, but the neighborhoods, the mm -hmm. houses. That was the next series, yes. Oh my goodness, I just, I was so in love. <laughs> oh, but you. I think for a lot of people, I mean, I know for me it was just, it brought up memories of my own childhood and, mm -hmm. and the neighborhoods I lived in, mm -hmm. and also just the fondness, you know, I have for these older uh, buildings and, mm -hmm. and I don't know just but you took it further you know of course how did what so this was another thing that you drive by yeah this is another in. drive by I mean this is um, it's based on houses in the Heights where I live mm -hmm. uh, I've lived there 20 something years mm -hmm. and um, in a cozy bungalow yeah. meaning small <laughs> 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 and yep. um, and it's the same thing. I kept seeing um, houses that, uh, when we first moved there, I would see a lot of houses and not see the people who lived in the houses. And I was, you know, curious, yeah. like, I'm sure people live in there, but I never see these <laughs> oh, people. That's funny, yeah. And I think it was a lot, at the time, there were a lot of elderly people uh -huh. that would keep uh -huh. to themselves. Yeah. And, um, and so it, I just started kind of building in my mind this mystery of, you know, what. Yeah. Who lived in these houses and you know what went on and what were their lives like and then in my own house uh, before I painted our kitchen I there was uh, a place where the family had written the heights of the kids throughout the years Aww. and it just broke my heart to have to paint over oh, them yes, oh, how yes. can I paint over this it's yeah. just so sweet but uh, it started me thinking about you know kind of the life of the houses and, you know Beautiful. since they're oh, from the gosh. 20s and so many people have lived there um, and then um, and then it you know got to be more and made me think about well um, you know how does this relate to my life mm -hmm. and um, and really the kind of I think the crux of why I was painting them was um, when I was growing up uh, my family was kind of split into my dad worked um, as a radio engineer at a radio station yeah. so he worked the night shift so he okay. was kind of working at night sleeping during the day mm -hmm. um, I have two older sisters they're 10 and 11 years older than me uh -huh. so and I was born uh, my mom was 40 when she had me, oh, wow. so I was kind of the surprise yeah. <laughs> baby of 40 <laughs> you know oh, you're pregnant <laughs> and um, yeah. so uh, so my sisters had gone off to college and my brother um, Kenny was uh, I guess nine years old seven years older than me mm -hmm. and Kenny had muscular dystrophy oh, 
So, um, so me, my mom, and Kenny had kind of a sub family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and so uh, and Kenny died when I was ten. Oh my gosh. And so he, when he died, we um, it was it was so weird how people dealt with death back then, with dealing with kids, the siblings, mm. um, when another sibling died. So. I remember everybody coming to the house um, to comfort my mom and them saying, Carrie, you're going to go next door to your friend Wendy's house. Oh, and my sweet friend Wendy, who I'm still friends with, hmm. she they tried to entertain me, play games and stuff like that. Um, anyway, when, you know, when things kind of got back to normal at home, mm. there was just this sadness in our house. Mm. And, but we had to, you know, go about living, you know, you can't yeah. go out into the world and say, you know, my brother's, my brother died, mm -hmm. you know, my mm -hmm. son died. Mm -hmm. That changed everything. And so it was just this sadness we kept in our house and, and I'm going to try not to cry, but, mm. um, and then, but the happy face to the world you present. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's ultimately... It took me a long time to figure it out why I was painting these sad, lonely houses. Oh my gosh. You know, it was really, really, and and That's why they had these these shadows and oh things like God. that. Oh my God, that it, that's so to me. That's kind of what my art is always about. It's yeah, not yeah. something flip it's not something trendy it's something really from here and it's always totally, been that way totally know? and that can only imagine so you internalize this and now mm -hmm. as an artist you wow what a what a realization and yeah a healing maybe i'm it, hoping in I, I think so and it was um yeah it's it's something that you don't want to deal with things yeah. like that but they just they come yeah. out, yeah. and I and yeah. so now what I'm working, the art I'm doing now, I keep thinking, well, maybe it's about this, maybe it's about that, and I'm just working, and um, you know, I'll oh, figure yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I keep having to write artist statements, and I think, well, I really don't know if that's what the art's about. Isn't that funny? Sometimes we're not, you know, it's like you can look at somebody else's work, and you may not know their story, but you you might have a better feel for what they're doing in some ways mm -hmm. or at least but our own our own process sometimes it's like uh we're not uh, we're not as in, attuned to it as we absolutely know, like think so yeah i so, often yeah. have uh you know people say well have you thought that maybe it's about don't you like <laughs> why didn't i think of that <laughs> we fulfilled something i think here because then you moved on i believe to those hand paintings, mm -hmm. and I remember feeling oh, when I even first saw them, first just perfectly done with the um, those the use of colors and the, the sharp lines. But my first feeling was uh, I really got pain mm -hmm. from looking mm -hmm. at those, mm -hmm. and and you know because it's a tension there. Um, mm -hmm. What what uh, sort of brought that on you um so that was brought on by um i guess right after i had a, a really big moment in 2013 that was kind of my big year yeah. i had my first solo show um at lawndale and uh you know got a grant from houston arts alliance a lot of things yeah. good things happened yeah. and then and i started noticing pain in my hands and i went to my doctor and also i was you know, it would be really stiff for an hour after I woke up. And mm -hmm. so I went to my doctor um, about something else and I told her about this and she said, oh, we need to have you tested to mm -hmm. see, you know. And, um, and it turned out uh, that I had rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. So I had the image of rheumatoid arthritis from the, you know, the old literature where your hands are like this and yeah. <laughs> yeah. all this terrible yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I was freaked out. I was mm -hmm. really freaked out because I thought, well, I'm an artist. I use my hands. You yeah, know, what yeah. does this mean? So yeah. I really went through a really dark period where I thought, you know, what is 
what's this what is this mm -hmm. gonna mean for my life because you know art is my life yeah yeah so um, so I started channeling that into my artwork and um, the hands were actually my hands I I started painting those and I was also doing um, I had been gotten fascinated with these crepe marble trees in front of my house uh, yes. and I realized they look like hands you yes. know they're very limb like and they're just yeah. like Love I don't know, arms yeah. hands fingers yeah. um, so I wanted to make my hands look like my fingers look like trees so I went to this yeah. photographer and I had to take pictures of my hands posed like trees yeah. so that's where that came from mm -hmm. that was my my uh, trying to you know really work through that whole experience yeah. of uh, I have this illness that might affect my art career and what am I gonna do and then also to I wanted to paint them at first uh, I thought oh I'll paint the hand sepia it's really depressing but then I thought well you know inflammation is very hot so I can use these Ooh, fluorescent colors. Yes, that was so effective. And well, and I think that was also another um, subliminal thing where I didn't even think about it, and I was just oh, using yeah. these really. I completely switched my palette from yes, this, you did. from this pastel to this really yeah. vibrant, saturated palette, yeah. and you know was working, and I thought. Oh, maybe that has to do with inflammation and, you know, this vibrant, this hot feeling. I don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, that makes so another sense. one of these things that happen. It is. It's very synchronistic kind of unfolding mm -hmm. process that later you're like, oh my gosh. Well, mm -hmm. Somebody else usually points it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, always. <laughs> somebody <laughs> always has to point yeah. it out for me. Um, so that's where that came from. Yeah, yeah. And you know when you start talking about the branches too of course you you started taking that further that uh, uh well at least that's what it with i think you call it portals or you you were yeah. working on oh my gosh well okay first i want to say that i i hadn't seen them until i came to your show in galveston mm -hmm. earlier this year and oh my goodness i was like <laughs> wow you have really taken this into a whole other level of exciting work and uh you know just the 3d element mm -hmm. and the see-through element mm -hmm. with the the uh pieces on the windows themselves uh -huh. and what a fabulous show that was oh, thank you so much it's just so happy and it's so wonderful to see that but so how how did it feel for you you when you started thinking this way or three-dimensionally um, it was, uh, that was really exciting. I was um, really thrilled to be uh, invited to do that show. And I had these, um, I'd been working, started working with cut paper. Um, it's paper that I paint and I cut out by hand. Yeah. And I started doing, yeah, it's a lot of work. Oh but, and it's tedious, but mm -hmm. I love tedious work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a Virgo. We just we <laughs> like that stuff. We're both doomed. Yeah, we just yeah, we're doomed. Um, it what I and it, it's kind of a coming back to um, I since I started out in graphic design mm -hmm. thirty plus years ago, yeah. everything was done by hand. Then, yes, and remember. which was great. It wasn't all done on the computer. Yeah. Um, and I, I was an expert at cutting things out with an X-Acto knife. I was kind of the go-to person. Yeah. And I love I loved doing that. I really mm -hmm. actually enjoy it. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, it would be neat to cut things out. And I, um, so I started experimenting. Um, and I thought, well, this would be a neat way to, because in my other works I created, I painted shadows, mm -hmm. and this would be a way to create shadows and create dimension. And I, I think the idea of portals and paths was that I was in a position where I just didn't know what was gonna happen next yeah. because of yeah. my illness. And, and just other things in life, you know, life yeah. just throws the craziest stuff, I will not curse on this one, <laughs> even though I, I curse in real life, it just, life throws you stuff that you, 
We never expect in a million years. <laughs> oh, it's very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like you have to fold that into your creative process mm -hmm. somehow and, and actually use it to to cope. Definitely. Definitely art helps you cope. Oh my God. Um, now, what I'm really interested in now, um, I've been teaching color theory um, mm -hmm. at Art League for almost five years now. Yeah. And yeah. I started doing it because um, I was interested in color and they say mm -hmm. if you want to really learn something, teach it. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a really great process, not only teaching students, but just learning more myself. And, and so, um, and that's kind of what I'm exploring now with my work is really just um, the amazingness of color. <laughs> I, have, I have two shows coming up because I... I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> no, actually, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. I have a show coming up at the Mystic Lion, which okay. is a space uh, art space in the Fifth Ward, run by uh, Emily Sloan. How wonderful! Who is? I'm so excited to be working with her because yeah. I really admired her work. I found her um, She's hysterical crazy. and so talented. One of the creative, most creative people I've ever known. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's called I'm a Stranger Here. Oh, and it's um, it's really about me. I wanted to do something uh, specific to the neighborhood. Um, it's really about me getting to know the Fifth Ward, the area right around the Mystic Lion. Yes. So I made a resource map. Oh, you and did. And so it's kind of an abstracted map of what's in the neighborhood. What a brilliant so it's idea! Called, you know, just. You have something else too, I think, like right behind you. I do. You. The week after, yeah. I have a, um, a show with a uh, three-woman three show called mm -hmm. Three Journeys. Oh. It's a show with myself, Betsy Evans, a ceramicist, and oh. Alexandra Sivov, a printmaker. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be here at the Silos, in Gallery 200 at the Silos on Sawyer. Um, that opens 6 to 9 p.m. It's I'm gonna have a staircase installation oh. which is right behind, I'm working on it behind oh. us. Oh. It's going to go on the two-story staircase. Mm -hmm. uh, Betsy's going to have a really neat installation. Alex is gonna have installation and then also uh, some of my recent paintings. Oh, wonderful. oh my gosh, that's exciting. So that's I've been working sun. Um, really hard and taking sleeping pills on <laughs> sleep. <laughs> I have to say, Thank you, I, mean, Nesta. <laughs> I, I sort of got in touch with her just um, literally less than a week ago. Can you do this this week? <laughs> and so, I needed a break. <laughs> I so appreciate you uh, uh, offering to do it and, and really can appreciate when you're in the middle of so much. You, you've really been very Busy. I have been busy, but I, I love you, and I couldn't say no to you. I'm just honored that you asked me to do oh, this. Oh, that's great. I love the series, and I think it's great that you're doing this. And oh, I'm thank you. So thank you. Well, I want to say to the viewers, thank you for uh, watching, uh, again, taking in uh, another fabulous artist who adds to the richness of the Houston area. I think this is so important and really this is why I'm doing this. Um, I, yeah, um, I appreciate it. Please do like, share, and subscribe, of course, so we can grow our numbers and, and so more people will see. Uh, thank you again. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. And bye to the bye. audience. <laughs> okay.